Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the operation, the functionality of this new DDS VFO on the bench. Look at some of the functionality. This software was written in 2010 by Ross Keating. Ross is a good guy. He's got a la he's got a website called theladderline.com. I've modified this uh, software uh, for my own use here at NIKR, uh, primarily in my homebrew station. So let's uh, look a little bit. Uh, take a look at the. Uh, of these push buttons on the front, look at the functionality of those. Uh, basically, number one, number two, number three. Uh, the green one there is not yet functional. I've added that in for future use, along with a couple of additional uh, ports on the back that are not hooked up yet. But basically, uh, we can cycle around. Uh, right now, you can see we're sitting in the middle of the uh, 40 meter uh, CW band there at 7.031 megahertz, 0 0.060, and uh, my step mode here right now is uh, 10 hertz. I mean that, that seems to work the best for CW. The signals are nice and smooth when you're tuning across the band. Up uh, is the step uh, button choice and we cycle every time you push it we cycle between uh, a higher to a lower uh, step function. So 100 kc is, is the highest. That's what we headed on. We were demonstrating the changes on the, uh, on the oscilloscope just a little while ago. And uh, the actual practical one that we use the most is probably 10 hertz for CW. It's nice and smooth. Sometimes 100. We usually use 100 hertz when we're listening to single sideband signals. So that's stepping through our steps, and it cycles through each one of the six choices every time you press the button. Okay. Uh, number two down here is the RIT. And uh, if we're sitting uh, again uh, here listening to a station or getting ready to talk to somebody, uh, we hit the RIT button one time and that puts us into RIT mode and the little zero pops up down there and it goes both negative and positive and that allows us to tune that far up to 9 kcs uh, off of each side of a zero beat, positive or negative. Real handy feature. Hitting that button again drops us out of RIT. Receive incremental tuning. Bottom choice down here is the mode button. That's the one you probably will use, well maybe not the most, but we use that a lot as well. That cycles through our, very, our four different mode choices. We're in uh, transceive right now, and that's denoted by the RX up here on the screen. And in this mode, actually, every time that we key the rig, uh, there's an input in the back of this DDS VFO for, from the keyer, and it'll know that uh, the Arduino knows every time we key for transmit, uh, it wants to offset the output by 600 hertz. That's adjustable in software, but that gives us the offset between, uh, between receive and transmit. Okay, so... Uh, if we cycle the next mode switch, we go to the memory choices. And this is probably the one I use the most. I have my main bands programmed into just the first few memory choices here. Number one is the 15 meters, number two is 20 meters, and then 30 meters, and then uh, 40 meters up here in number four. And I go on up to number uh, seven, and I have uh, 18 meters uh, programmed in there, and then, uh, or I mean, uh, 17 meters programmed in there, and number seven. Number eight is uh, 80 meters. And the way these work is uh, once they're set up, uh, any button. Uh, I want to go if I want to go to 15 meters here. I hit this execute button, button number two, and that'll take me to 15 meters at that frequency. Hit the memory, the mode button down here again, which takes us to memory. And if I want to go to 20 meters, hit the execute button, and now we're in the middle of the 20 meter CW band. Uh, same thing for any of the other bands that I have programmed. Okay, so cycling uh, past memory, the next choice is calibration, and that's really just a one-time uh, deal that you have to calibrate. Uh, to get the oscillator frequency exactly on frequency and there's some instructions on Ross's website and you can calibrate against WWV or some other means that you might have. Pretty straightforward on the calibration part. Punching that one more time takes us to a non, in my case, a non-IF uh, uh, mode where you can see the exact frequency we're actually, uh, that the rig is actually putting out, the VFO is actually putting out. And then one more time we switch back to our IF included uh, which basically either adds or subtracts 9 megahertz from the signal and uh, so that's how that works. And that's that's how that works. In my case also we have um, uh, a number of relay functions both on the receiver side and the transmit side that are programmed in the software to actuate on the frequency range that we're in. Uh, and uh, those are kind of again customized for my setup and they are hard coded right now but they're relatively easy to change. Okay, we've got our brand spanking new Mega 2560 Arduino DDS VFO set up in our homebrew station now, and we're on 40 meters. Uh, we still got the display kind of the contrast kind of set set down so the characters look black for purposes of the video here. 
but uh, we're on 40 meters and uh, let's listen around a little bit and we're going to demonstrate uh, some of the features uh, of our unit here. Pretty quiet. There's somebody in the QSO. My name is Bill. We've got the the step uh, set on uh, 10 hertz right now, so as we as we tune here, you can see it's relatively smooth. If we change it down to 1 hertz, it's even finer. Cycle back around to 100 hertz starts getting a little bit ragged for CW signals basically moves too fast through there so we'll leave it on 10 Hertz listen around a little bit more in 40 meters here's how the RIT well, I was going to demonstrate the RIT feature but uh, we got to have a somebody in a QSO here to demonstrate that or once we initiate the RIT feature the zero pops up there we can go to the left or up in frequency hit the RIT again drops back out again receive incremental tuning works well if we want to change bands um, we have uh, several of our favorite brand bands programmed into memory so we go down to the mode switch and the first option that comes up is memories and that's there's our 40 meter uh, programmed memory, 30 meters, 20 meters, and uh, there's 15. We want to jump up to 15 meters. We hit the execute button one time. And our antenna or receiver uh, switches over there, switches low pass filters for us and band pass filters, and the antenna changed. Again, all this switching we have kind of custom programmed into our, our, our uh, DDS VFO so that uh, the switching takes place at the various band changes. 15 meter CW band is pretty quiet at this point. Nobody there. Let's jump down to uh, 30 meters. Hit our mode switch. Memory position number three. Hit the execute. Now we're on 30 meters. down lower here let's go back down to 40 meters and we'll try a quick CQ down there and see if we can raise anybody in a in a QSO hit the mode switch and memory to 40 meters hit the execute now we're back down on 40 meters again let's uh, find a clear spot here let's uh, let's go on up to uh, someplace up around the QRP section of the band. We're only running about uh, 8 watts right now on the transmitter, so try and find a clear spot and send a QRL as the frequency busy. You can notice when the every time the key transmits the RX turns to a TX on the display. And I hear somebody there, so we'll try and find a clearer spot. How about here? QRL, is the frequency busy? Nobody there answering, so it sounds like we may be clear. We'll try a quick CQ. We have also an Arduino-based uh, 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 keyer uh, that we homebrewed, and that's what we're using uh, as our keyer right now, and uh, we've got a, uh, it's got a PS2 keyboard uh, set up with it here. It's not showing up in the video, but we can program in a, a bunch of pre-recorded messages there. So, of course, our call sign and CQ and QRL question mark are some of the more common ones we have those in. Let me hit the CQ button since it doesn't seem to be busy, and we'll give it a shot here. Kind of a quick CQ, just a short one, no response immediately here. 
let's uh, let's take a look over on the uh, the reverse beacon network. I've got it pulled up on my laptop here, and we'll see if we have any response to that CQ. And I believe we do. If we can get down, get down here where we can see it. Looks like we have uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six responses. Uh, fours and eights and uh, a two in there. And uh, for eight watts, that's not too bad into a dipole. Looks like we were anywhere from about 9 dB up to 17 dB in signal strength at the various locations. Okay, so we're working, and uh, the band's pretty quiet right now. It's the middle of the afternoon here on a weekday. And uh, we're real happy with the way that our DDS VFO came out. Uh, as we as we mentioned in the prior video, this is an enhanced version uh, of our AD328 Mega. That's the first one that we built, and we have basically more flexibility and the ability to uh, uh, add on some additional uh, functions, uh, some additional switching, and some other things that we're thinking about uh, trying to build in to kind of automate the shack here in the CW mode. Okay, so I think we'll. Uh, Halt the video here and halt the demo and uh, I just say uh, thanks for watching. Uh, the uh, information for the base AD or the base Omega 328 uh, DDS VFO can be found at theladderline.com. That's Ross Keating's website. And uh, again, our we've done uh, a fair amount of experimenting and hacking around with the software for, to, to kind of customize and meet some of our experimental needs here and uh, because of that I am not in a position currently to, to post the software or make it available but anybody that's interested in working with the DDS VFOs and those the little AD9850 chips uh, the DDS modules and the uh, Arduino uh, processor uh, that's a great starting point at Ross's website at theladderline.com. There's a lot of comments in there from folks over the past couple of years that have discovered additional enhancements and, and uh, answered some questions for you there. So great source, great resource uh, if you're interested in experimenting on your own uh, with this uh, great open source code. Thanks, folks.